Hey guys, and welcome to April Was a Fool. This is Cygnus here, and uh, this is also a dating sim. Uh, I actually really like dating sims, and I played this one before and I really enjoyed it, so uh, we're gonna give it another go because I, oh, I wanted to do a let's play about it. So, I can't quite remember what went on here, but uh, we'll go through it. And, uh, I do remember this guy was my favorite, though. So I'm probably gonna start off with him. <laughs> He's cool, too. Yeah. But anyway, let's go. Two years ago, six heroes were summoned to defeat a terrible dark overlord who was threatening the lands. Their adventure met with success, and the overlord was banished from this world. Peace returned, and the heroes were lauded by the people. However, peace is never constant, and another evil force has ri risen to take control of the world. Though the presence has only just begun its rampage, the king notices the potential this threat holds, taking action immediately. Once again, these six heroes are called upon to fight. This is their story. I actually really like this dating sim. It's just really interesting to me. Yeah, there's like no... Ne they haven't finished the backgrounds, but I don't know. I haven't updated this in a while, so... Maybe they have, and I'm just playing an older version of it, but I, I don't know. I, I still really like it. <laughs> I, I kind of like the, this kind of background. It's very, it's easy on the eyes. So, um, yeah, I really, really enjoy this game. It's one of my favorite dating sims, and I've played a lot of them. So <laughs> probably going to do a lot of them on this channel as well, because I enjoy them so much. I really like games that have like a lot of decision making in them. Not sure why. And also story-based games are one of my favorites. It's probably what you're going to see a lot on this channel, so. Anywho, let's, let's go with it. Um, I'm going to... I don't remember exactly who made this game. I know it was on the RPG Maker. I think it was uh, using the RPG Maker kind of um, system that makes visual novels. I can't... Renpy, it might have been. I can't remember exactly. But, uh, yeah. So... I don't know how that system works, but it's really good. Like, so far what I've seen, I don't know, I like the art and stuff. The character art is so cool. And I think I've been following the creator a little bit. I, their name escapes me, but I don't know. I hope to see more from them. <laughs> and I just started this. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's continue reading this. Okay. Uh, the castle of His Majesty, King the Fourteenth, is well decorated with banners and candles and paintings. All 13 previous kings, immortalized in marble statues, stand outside the throne room. Their expressions are ones that demand respect, nothing at all like the current king. This is the first time I've been inside the castle. I've always tried to picture it, but never could I have imagined something quite this grand. My gaze drifts, my gaze drifts from the finely woven tapestries and stern faces of the statues towards the ceiling. It's so high. Walls reaching upwards to meet it, stained glass windows sparkle in the afternoon sunlight along the top, casting the hallway in a light that's dazzling and rainbow in color. Ooh, that sounds really pretty. I've been standing here for a while now. Four other people stand close by who have been here with me for this entire time. We're waiting for the last member of our small group to finish his discussion with the king. The, other, the others had explained to me earlier that he was the only one with a high enough skill level in listening to actually hear the king's mumbled words. Oh yeah, this, I forgot to mention, this game, this dating sim is really similar to kind of like an RPG, except for there's no RPG aspects to it, it's just like a story that's like in an RPG world. Or D&D &D or whatever, whatever place that actually has like... You know, like classes and levels and all that. If I go to the menu, I think. Yeah, if I go to the menu, here are the characters. Uh, see, we have Erwin Gates, level 80 rogue. He has a high HP, high MP, and our affections on all of them are zero. Gabby Embers is level 75 mage. Lower HP, but infinite MP, apparently. Gun Rose, level 80 priest. I really like this guy. He's a really interesting character. They're all very interesting characters. Um... I like them. These two are my favorite, though. Gunrose and Kent Kentson. <laughs> Kent, that name, though, is beautiful. He's a level 58 berserker. He's really high HP and absolutely zero MP. Magic, oh, HP is health points and MP is magic points. You guys already know that. 
But uh, <laughs> Blake Embers, level 23 knight, from what I know is that he's a little brother of her. They're siblings, but that's all I know. And that's us. We're level 10, whatever. Who knows? <laughs> Something. <laughs> We're very low level compared to them. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the wallet in the front pouch of my dress is an ever-constant thought in my mind. It's why I'm here. It's why I'm still here. <laughs> Even an hour's time spent standing here doing nothing was worth it for the amount of money they'd given me. Normally, I'd be at work right now, but today turned out different. Oh, one second. Ugh. Maybe I should explain. Uh, let's take a sip of water here. <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie. Um, so this is Blake. Uh, what, what voice should I give him? Uh, what are we going to do? Calm down, Blakey. We just need to stop freaking out and think rationally. Yo, Erwin, what are we going to do? <laughs> um... Uh, I don't know what to give Kent. Uh, I don't see any problem if just the five of us go. That's why I didn't ask you. King summoned all six of us, and he's too seen now to understand why only five of us showed up. Uh, it's really a pity what happened to April. I wish I could have been there. Ain't never seen someone get torn asunder by a dragon before. Would have been one throw of a patch-up job. Uh, who is Blake again? Oh, that's a kid, I think. Yes. Okay. Stop, I don't want to think about that. Edwin! Huh? Edwin, are you even listening to us? We got, we got to figure out what we're... Look over there, at that girl. Seriously. Seriously, much as I don't mind looking at chicks, it's really not the time for. She? It's a... Oh, I, I keep messing up these words. It's April. You know that's not possible. April's dead. Uh, I know, I... Sure does look like her, but I don't think anyone could have healed her up from how her body looked once the dragon was... <laughs> once the dragon was through with her. At least, from what Blake told me. I bet that's the case. Of course it's not April, you idiots. She's... However, she does bear an uncanny resemblance. If we can be fooled by it, the, if we can be fooled by it, then his majesty king should fall for it easily. Excuse me, milady. It's only my third day on the job, but I'm already used to responding to patrons calling out for my attention when they need service. I approach the table of the man who just called me. He's rather handsome and wearing clothes of high quality, but there's something behind that smile, smile that's hard to trust. His companions at the table with him don't appear that reliable either. Tis right is a woman clothed in colorful silks with almost predatory sneer, with an almost predatory sneer, and to his left an intimidating hulk of a man in what appears to be some sort of traveling priest robes, maybe. Across the table are two younger-looking boys dressed in armor. One wears leather and is smiling openly, while the other is in light-colored armor with an intricate design and a nervous disposition. If one can wear such a thing... Their outfits suggest that they are powerful, or at least wealthy, but I can't seem to shake the feeling of awe and dread that first caught me when I came over. Still, they are customers. I reach for my notepad to jot down their orders. Milady, my name is Erwin Gates. I almost dropped my notepad in shock. Oh, perhaps you've heard of me. Yes, Erwin Gates, the richest man alive, mayor of Kirk City and hero of the known world. Of course I've heard of him. Everyone's heard of him. <laughs> He helped defeat the Dark Overlord years ago. That would make the others at the table with him. Oh, uh, God, I forgot what I gave Kent. Haha, <laughs> yeah! We're all world-class heroes! World-class heroes? World-class heroes, sorry. World-class heroes? What are they? Urn grabs my hand. The action enough to make me... Bleh. The action is enough to make my already trembling fingers drop my pen and my racing thoughts to freeze. He presses his lips lightly to the back of my hand. Ew. There is a favor we must ask. Eh. I can't read. <laughs> I need my glasses. There is a favor we must ask of you. Put away that notepad, milady, for our favor requires you spend some time in our company. What in the world could people like them want with someone like me? 
we need you to pretend to be an old acquaintance of ours for a short romp in the castle. Fact of the matter is, you look just like our friend April before she was pulled into twenty pieces and her blood splattered all over the snow-covered treasure of a dragon. I recoil, clutching my hand close to me. I know fear must be written all over my face. There weren't dragons in the castle, though, right? What was the point of even telling me that? More importantly, why is he smiling? Rose, Rose, you've gone and bleh, you've gone and scared the poor lamb. Ain't no one gonna wanna pretend to be someone else after you up and tell him how she died. Fine, April was a cool chick. You'd like her. That didn't make anything he just said any better. I start to protest, hair swaying back and forth with my head, shaking, I guess. Huh, guess you're right. Can't really say for sure you'd like her. We're not asking for much. We just need you to come and stand- Ah, uh, crap. We're not asking for much. We just need you to come stand in the castle with us, and then it'll, be, it'll all be over. No dragons, no overlords, no bandits, or ravens, or wyverns, or anything like that. Yeah! The two of them are va vastly more reassuring than the rest. Still. Okay, look. Enough beating around the bush with small talk. I can pay you handsomely if you do this. If you do us this favor. Like Ken said, all you need to do is stand in the castle. How many people can say they were paid to stand in the castle? Sure looks like you need the cash. He hands me back my what? Wait, what? He, he hands me back my wallet. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Besides, it'll be fun. Erwin does all the talking anyway, so we can show you around the castle for a bit if you'd like that. I mean, it would be cool. Yeah, the castle's pretty neat. I keep changing their voices. <laughs> Crossing my arms, I think it over. It's true what they say. Getting paid to stand in the castle would certainly be a simple thing to do. Oh, wait a minute. Why do you need to, why do you need to go if only one of us is going to speak with the king? My, my, your intelligence is a bit higher than your appearance would have me expect, hmm? King always kisses his heroes on the head before they leave for luck. For good luck. <laughs> Says his lips were blessed by angels or some clock. Oh, I keep... Ah, shit. <laughs> Sorry. King always kisses his heroes on the head before they leave for good luck. Says his lips were blessed by angels or some clock. That's why there's gotta be six of us. Not one of us has got the heart to tell King that April died. Oh, I'll tell, my, I'll tell them for all of you. In great detail. First... Stop! That'd make the man cry, Rose! The last thing we need is to have, is to, have to sit through some senile geezer crying all over us. Well, now. Well, now you see what sort of predicament we're in. What's it going to be? He's holding my wallet again, waving it back and forth and making a big show out of how empty it is. Just stand in the castle. I suppose that's really not so bad. Nodding, I agree to help him. Yay! It'll be nice having six of us again. Blake reaches across the table to grab my hands. His smile is refreshing and helps stave off any impending sense of doubt or regret. Yeah, even if it's just for a little while. She can't come with us to save the world, Blake. I know. Well, I keep changing. I know. Gabby gives the younger boy a rough bop on the head, and he lets go of my hands. Unless you want to follow in April's footsteps completely, hike up a mountain and be gutted by row upon row of dragon teeth, I've got enough spells to keep you alive through the whole thing. There's that doubt and regret again. Maybe this was a bad idea. I hear another patron calling across the room for my service and start to make my way towards him. Hold up. Hold up, lamb. Just ignore Rose. The man's as morbid as a necromancer, but he's not a bad guy. My feet freeze and slowly I turn back to face them. They're all smiling at me, mustering up the best reassuring faces that they can. True, in most cases, they're, miss they're missing the mark, but the effort is appreciated. Maybe, maybe we can, uh, maybe we're getting off to a bad start. I'm Kent. What's your name? I introduce myself to them. Uh, we are Cygnus. Cygnus, a barmaid who, oh, whoops, uh, nope. I clicked the a barmaid who just started work a few days prior in hopes to raise enough money to attend classes at Hero Academy in Perk. Hero Academy? I remember my days there. I wonder what's a dame such as yourself hoping to study there. Ah, uh, what do we want to study? What would I want to do in real life? <laughs> um... I 
don't know. Probably roguery. <laughs> I know that sounds bad, but uh, I always like playing rogues in games. and uh, Or thieves or whatever, like Skyrim or whatever. I love playing the rogue and thieves. So probably roguery. That's amazing. Suits you well, I think. Kate claps me on the back while he laughs with excitement. He's stronger than he looks. When he stops, I sheepishly rub my back, hoping he doesn't notice. He doesn't. How fortunate. With the money you'll earn from doing this, us this little favor, you'll easily be able to attend all the classes you need, and then some. You could walk right out of this job and never have to worry about serving tables again. He hands me back my wallet. I take a quick, quick peek inside, and just like he said, it's overflowing with cash. Oddly enough, the picture of my mother is missing. Strange, I guess I'll have to ask him about that later. That was how I met five of the six legendary world-class heroes who had saved the world once before and were hoping to save it again. Alright. Water for this. So it says, Erwin Gates, age 27, level 80. Class, rogue. Occupation, mayor. Place of birth, perk. His special skills include lockpicking, expert hearing, and disarm traps. His hobbies are traveling... He likes money and expensive cheeses and dislikes annoying people. Wow. <laughs> wow, okay. Erwin Gates, the richest man in the world and rumored to be one of the smartest. He claims his role in saving the world is strictly confidential. Maybe he was their benefactor. Oh, whoops. I gotta stop scrolling. Gabby Embers, age 32, level 75. Class, mage. Occupation, hero. Place of birth, eastern. Her special skills include 1 MP cost, MP regeneration, and elemental resist. Her hobbies are burning things, she likes fire and the smell of burned wood, and dislikes incompetence. Gabby Embers, a mage from Eastern Town who was wanted in several towns for arson before she saved the world and was cleared of all charges. Ooh, a felon. <laughs> Kent Kenson, son of Kent. I really love this guy. <laughs> Age 22, level 58. Uh, uh, class berserker, occupation, none, place of birth, winter. His special skills include dual weld. His hobbies are taming animals. He likes peace and cookies with milk and dislikes fighting. I love this. Love this guy. I really love cutesy guys. <laughs> uh, Kent Kenson, son of Kent, a young boy from the northern town of winter. It said he landed the final blow against the previous threat to the world. Maybe he only had one HP left. Yeah, he doesn't seem very threatening, does he? He looks very friendly. But he did the final blow, so... Maybe. Ah, he's adorable. Okay. Three things I love already. Brown hair. Blue eyes. Freckles. Love. Love, love. Gun Rose. I like him because he's really interesting. <laughs> he's just fascinating. I also like that he's wearing pink and has, like, this girly magical wand. But he's, like, super morbid. And he's also this big guy. It's really funny. I love it. <laughs> Gun Rose, age 25, level 80, class priest, occupation priest, place of birth, perk. His special skills include group healing, concentration, and heal plus. Hobbies include drawing and singing, likes, charity work, and dislikes con artists. Gun Rose, a brash man from Perk City. He dresses like a bad guy, but he apparently his skills as a healer can't be rivaled. Also, the others are sure he's a good singer. <laughs> Blake Embers. I didn't really like Blake too much, but I didn't actually do his story, so maybe I'll like him after I do his story. So, age 23, level 23, class warrior, occupation hero, place of birth, eastern. His special skills include hero prophecy. Oh, what? I don't know. Hobbies, his hobbies, yeah, his hobbies are collect stores. He likes sour food, stories about heroes, and dislikes his own lack of skill. Yeah, he's very uh, self-confident, oh, no, self self-conscious is the word, I think. Self-confident is the opposite of that word. <laughs> Blake Embers, Gabby's younger brother. His skills with a sword were said to be second to only one, April. Though his confidence holds him back. Oh, oh I forgot to mention. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, this game's called April Was a Fool. And uh, it's actually a joke because it came out on April Fool's Day. I don't remember when. Maybe like a year or two ago. Three years ago. I don't even know how long ago. I don't even know. But, um... Oh, yeah, I still have it on my computer because I liked it so much, but, um, yeah, I thought that was always funny, so this is why it's somewhat of a comedy. 
it's kind of like a spoof, but it actually has like serious points in it. That's uh, so what I like about it. I also love this art style. It's awesome. <laughs> so Owen says, My beautiful friends, I return once more. One king skillfully comprehended and conversed with, one mission ready to tell. It's about damn time. I think my feet were starting to root here. We took Cygnus around the castle a few times, so I don't think your feet were going to turn into trees, Gabby. No fun. Well, what did the old guy say? Allow me to paraphrase. He closed his throat in a dramatic manner, hunching over a little bit to impersonate the feeble king. My dearest Irwin, most beautiful man alive, I am so glad to lay eyes upon your flawless visage once more. I have only grave news for you, a fact that puts me in great sorrow, but your gorgeous eyes help to lift my spirit once more. <laughs> Watch out, sounds like King wants you in a... <laughs> Watch out, King. sounds like King wants in your pants. <laughs> Doesn't everyone gabs, my dear? <laughs> I sure as hell don't. <laughs> One exception to the rule... Not one bit of this counts as paraphrasing, Erwin. Get on with it already, before I gotta do something drastic, like bruise those gorgeous eyes of yours. And then heal me afterwards, I should hope. Yeah, so I can proceed to break your running mouth and then heal it too, so you can apologize. <laughs> His grace has tasked us with finding and destroying the entity known as evil before it cloaks the world in darkness. Who names the kid evil? They were just asking for this, you know? Maybe they're masochists. Uh, I forgot what I gave Blake. How are we going? How are we going to defeat something like that? Well, we saved the world before. I don't see why we can't do it again. But we had April before. A silence takes over the grand hallway, settling between the marble statues and lingering along the thick carpet. A look between them. Each has their face drawn tight, head hung low, eyes directed towards the floor. Erwin's hands are balled so tightly, his nails dig into his skin. Blake looks ready to cry. It's obvious whoever this April was, she meant a great deal to them. I know I can't replace that, but I should at least say something to try to raise their spirits. What should I say? I'm sure you'll, you'll all be fine without her. The five of you are still heroes. I'm sorry for your loss, but you have the, a world to save. Hmm. I would say this one. Uh, I, I feel like this would cheer them up the best. I'm sure you'll all be fine without her. That's kind of harsh. And I'm sorry for your loss, but you have a, that's also kind of harsh. Like, you guys are still heroes. But, but even without April, I'm we're still April. Okay, guys, so let's focus on the mission. Where did King say this evil guy is? Erwin doesn't answer. Head still drooped downwards. Erwin, snap out of it! <laughs> With a dagger-like jab, Gabby strikes Erwin's arm and brings him back to, to his senses. The awkward yelp gets Blake's attention as well. He didn't know. That's a pain. Last time, his, last time his seers were able to point us right, in the right to the final boss. His seers have done their best. Ah. His seers have done their best, but they were unable to track the exact current location of evil. Apparently, its magic is rather powerful, and its influence has spread out to many places. Oh, whoops! Has spread out to many places, making it hard to pinpoint. However, they were able to locate a few places where it has been before. What do you mean by that? They found the town it originated. They found the town it originated from, a small and humble hamlet located on the outskirts of a forest called Hick Village. A castle, quite foolishly named Castle Evil, has been used as its dwelling several times in the past. Also, there's a small laboratory outside of Perk City that is being used to build weapons of impressive power that it's believed to have connections with. Come on. Ah, shoot. His voice is... It's hot. Let's start to do any water. <laughs> Come on, man. You're the mayor of Perk, and you didn't notice some lab being built right near your town. I noticed. I figured it might draw in some interesting new business. The expansion of a town is about more than just kicking out suspicious-looking buildings the second they appear. You let them build an evil lab? Erwin starts tapping his foot relentlessly against the carpeted floor. 
I didn't know it was evil. Whatever, yo. Let's not argue between each other, especially over Erwin's morality. That's a topic that's as old as the. Uh, that's a topic that's as old as the sun. What's the ma What's the mission? Normally, Abel would decide. They start to slip into another round of silence, but seems pretty straightforward to me. We had a death peaks. Whoa, whoa! Oh shit! Whoa, whoa! Why death peaks? No one mentioned death peaks. Death peaks was not any of the options just now. Are you trying to get us killed? We already know that. Ah, oh, shoot. I I kind of want to give him a Russian accent for some reason. I don't know why. I can't really do that very well, but I'm going to try anyway. Uh... No, you know what? Never mind. Uh, oh, whatever. We all we already know... Uh, no, that's... Whatever, okay. We already know that that's usually Rose's main goal. That's no good. We can't do that. I don't want to die. I don't want to go there. So what's I've got magic for, kid? It's cool. He bats it like... Lightly. <laughs> that's actually that's why I like him. He's really funny. He's like, oh man, I don't want to die. And he's like, oh, don't worry, I have magic. <laughs> uh, so if you do die, I can bring you back. No, that's necromancy, but I can do it before you die. <laughs> he pats Blake lightly on the back, but from the look of on Blake's face, guns lightly is about as light as a horse stepping on your foot. I'm only two years younger than you. I'm not a kid. Look, shouldn't we have? Shouldn't we start by... Let's head to Hick Village and burn the ruddy place to the ground. Huh? What good... Well, what good is that going to do, sis? I've never heard of a megalomaniac who wants to take over the world using his hometown as his base of operations. What we should do is head to the lab near Perk and burn it to... Oh, shoot. And burn it to the ground. Flames ripple across Gabby's arms. Surprisingly, her ropes don't burn up. Though I shouldn't be that shocked, most mages find armor suited to their needs. Her robes are likely fireproof. Can you not do that? I'll do it. Uh, I keep. Bleh. I'll do what I want, Rose. We will not be setting a building near the magnificent city of Perk on fire, Gabs, my dear. What we will do is infiltrate the laboratory and steal whatever secret doomsday weapon evil has hidden inside. Can't we just take it up with Utopia Makers? His voice is <laughs> nervous, each word coming out with careful, plotted diction. From what I've learned of our time together, that seems unusual. Please, oh shoot, please, <sighs> please, Kent. Everyone knows that the UM is practically useless. That's not true. Just last month, my dad brought the conflict of winter and summer to the UM, and they solved it peacefully. They can do really great things. Now, Dad and I go there. Now, Dad and I go over there and have tea and cookies with the elders of summer pretty often. I bet Eva would enjoy tea and cookies too. Oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs> that's so cute. Heck, no, he wouldn't. Kent, get a grip in action. In a get a grip in a re reality check. I can't read. Ah, uh, get a grip in a reality check. My plan. My plan is the best. Burn down his hometown, and he'll be forced to come out. Come out of hiding for revenge. Then we put him back to whatever hole he crawled out of. Gabs, he can't crawl back to whatever hole he crawled out of if you literally burn that, the hole he crawled out of to the ground. I'm talking about wherever he's hiding now, not his mother, you prick. Clamp your, clamp your yappers and just admit it already. My plan is what? <laughs> Gabs, he can't crawl back to whatever hole he crawled out of if you literally burn the hole he crawled out of. Oh my god. That's so disgusting. <laughs> I'm talking about whatever he's hiding now. Not his mother, you prick. Clamp your yappers and just admit it. My plan is the best. Death Peaks. Every final boss hides at Death Peaks. The Overlord wasn't at Death Peaks. They have a, they have a castle called it Castle Evil. Why is no one suggesting we go there? That's their base. They named it after themselves, and it's a castle. Why dirty our hands with fighting at all if we can just get into the, its lab and steal everything it was going to use to take over the world? No offense, Erwin. No, no offense, Erwin. I don't really want you having that stuff either. I would donate. I would donate it to the king in the city of Castle, naturally. Then you'd hawk it back into your own little collection. Now nah, we ain't putting that stuff anywhere near you. Oh yeah, he's like a hoarder or something. I think. 
you say my good name, my dear Gabrielle? It's Gabs or it's Gabby, or it's your head in the frying pan. If April were here, she would have us already at the door and on our way. Shut up, Blake, come on. April would have wanted us April would have wanted us to take the peaceful route. Let's go to the UN and ask them to politely request evil not to take over the world. Damn. <laughs> He's so cute. April got eaten by a dragon because she wanted to steal all of its gold. Think you're giving her charity too much credit. As much as she was a magnificent woman, Gun, that wasn't exactly what she wanted to. And then she was going to donate that money to the poor. <laughs> what? No, she wanted to fight the dragon because April would April would have want April would have wanted us to go to the UN. Yo, how many times did you suggest to April that we go to the UN over the last two years we've been together? Um, I think fifteen different times. And how many times did we go to the UN? Once. Let's burn down Hick Village! <laughs> here's an idea. Uh, here's an idea. Why don't we let the lady decide? They all look at me for the first time since they started bickering. Five sets of eyes, the eyes of heroes. I suppose that sounds pretty daunting, but they're all idiots. I agree with Erwin. Me too. You should help us pick, Cygnus. The last... The, uh, one last thing while you're standing for April. I, of course, also agree with Erwin. What? He said his name, what? <laughs> sure, why not? You seem like a well enough gal to leave in charge of our fate. Shoot it, babe. What's the answer? Uh, this one. One, because I do think peace is the best weapon. I'm, I'm somewhat of a pacifist. I like to think so, anyway. And uh, also, I want to go the Kent route. And the Kent route says to go to the UN. Although I already messed up the route a little bit by not following what I'm supposed to, but whatever. We're going with what I would want to pick, and uh, I also want to do Kent, so. Yippee! Seriously? Oh, shoot. Seriously? Ugh. You said it. That's the cider, then. I suppose we'll be off. Milady, you have our deepest gratitude. If not for you, we'd still be consoling his majesty after informing him of April's death. Or at least still describing the sound of her spine popping apart. Pop, 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 pop. Stop it. That's enough. Yeah, sorry. His enthusiasm burns out quickly. I can't say I'm not grateful for that. <laughs> it, was tru it was truly a pleasure to meet you. He takes my hand again, kissing the back once more. His eyes meet mine as his head rises. Behind those eyes is something very sad. He covers it quickly with a smile and stands straight once more. He turns to leave. Kent hits my arm playfully, which stings a surprising amount, and gives me a small wave as he pa walks past. Blake is next. A sheepish, uh, I, you know, I can't read. <laughs> a sheepish smile and a clumsy shake of my hand later, and he was leaving too. Gun and Gabby both follow suit. Small gestures I messed up there. Small gestures of farewell, making the last interactions I would have with them. I don't want it to end here. Ah, I'm stretching. Okay. I don't want it to end here. Clenching my hands nervously, I call out. They each stop and turn slowly. Once again, the eyes of five heroes are watching me. What is it, my lady? What kind of in a hurry? Got a will to save and all? I'm not sure why, but I want to go with them. I want to be a hero, too. I explain my desires to them, ignoring the shocked looks on their faces. But you haven't even gone to school yet. How can you be a hero? I never went to school either. It ain't that. Kent's right though. Uh, Kent's right though. You don't really look like a hero. Ma you don't really look like hero material yet. Doesn't really look like hero material, huh? I'm sorry, Miss Cygnus, but it's too dangerous where we're going. At any time, evil could send creatures of darkness to devour us. Devour? <laughs> never mind that. Creatures of darkness do far worse than that. They crawl their way into your mind and force you to witness your worst fears over and over until you are driven mad with regret and fear, until you are nothing more than an empty shell of your true self. He gestures as he talks, making it impossible not to vividly imagine the scenario he's painting with his words and actions. 
I swallow back my fear. Wow, wow, they should really look for a new hobby. I hear baking is quite nice. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, let's not make light of milady's request. Tell me, how do you plan to keep up with us? I can be strong, I'll show you. I'll try not to get in the way. I just want to watch evil be defeated. Uh, I can be strong, I'll show you. None of them say anything else, but Erwin offers me his hand. I take it, and he pulls me forward to stand beside the rest of them. Releasing his grip, he pats my, my back lightly, and the group starts walking once more. I hesitate at first, but soon match their steps. I'm not sure what made them accept me, but I'm glad. I'm going to be a hero. Wait, we forgot to get our royal good luck kiss. Everyone groans loudly, and we turn back, entering the king's throne room for our blessed, albeit slobbery, old man kisses. Ew! <laughs> oh, God! Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> Just keep thinking about the money. It'll be over soon. <laughs> I love that. That's funny. The area outside of Castle City is mostly used for farming. Open and flat land stretches out around us on either side of the dirt path we're walking along. A couple of times we pass a caravan bringing freshly harvested goods into the city for sale. It reminds me fondly of my parents and home. In order to work in the city, I had to move away from my family. I miss them. Yet they'd both be proud to hear of what I'm doing now. 